What's up everybody, Screen Printer Mike here. In this tutorial, we'll download a full color file from a royalty free site and turn it into a four color posterized artsy looking photo that will work for a variety of things such as screen print, vinyl cut, or any other project that you have. So let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm going to start out from scratch and I'm going to go to Unsplash to grab a photo. This is a royalty free site. You can type about any keyword you want in here and go searching for a photo. I like this guy right here. I've used him before. I'm going to download this image and then drag it right on to Photoshop. And here we go. First thing I'm going to do is crop this image down really don't need all of this going on here. That's good. About right here. I'll look at the image size because it really doesn't need to be that wide. Maybe 2,500. Something in there. Let's get this down where it's workable. Double click here to make it a layer. I'm going to tell the program to remove the background. Let's see how well of a job Looks like it did pretty good. I still got a piece in here. Don't know why that's going on. Let me paint that out real quick. Don't want to spend too much time on this. Just trying to work with this image right here. And when all's said and done, we'll have a four color posterized artsy looking design using this photo here. You see, I went too much there, but it'll be fine. Okay, now that we have our image here, we're going to add some adjustment layers. And we're going to start with a hue and saturation layer. We're going to bring that saturation down to zero. Then we're going to add a solid color layer. Now this color really doesn't matter at this point. I usually pick right in here somewhere just to start with. And we need to set this to hard mix. Once we have it to hard mix, I want to come back in to this color fill and I want to pull my adjustment until I see a third or a fourth color in this case come out, which is this yellow here. So you see I almost have an equal amount showing the different tones. I've got white, black, and then the red and yellow in here. Uh, this will give me a good visual where I need to be. Now I'm going to add another adjustment layer, black and white. We're going to come down to the blues and adjust it to 40 and the magentas and adjust it to 60. And lastly, we're going to add a gradient map adjustment layer. And over here, when you click on this gradient uh, in the properties, you're going to see the whole tonal range here that's going on up here. We need to add a couple more. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to add, I'm going to add this aqua color here. I'm going to make sure it's set to 40. Then I'm going to click up here, set it to 60 and I need to pick a, a lighter color. So I have some contrast going on here. So that's good right there. Okay. Remember, you can always change these colors at any time. I'm going to come back down to the color fill. And I'm just going to play around a little bit, looking at what detail I have and where I can go with this. You know, there's a lot of shadow area here where you're missing a lot of this face. And I want to see if I'm at the optimum place where I'm getting a little more uh, detail in here. I'm starting to like what I see right there. And really this is up to your eye, what you're going for. Each photo is different and you're able to tweak the photo a little bit um, to try to uh, change where the color's at. Um, now it's smart to go ahead and right click and convert this to a smart object because we're going to make some adjustments here. And when we do, we want to be able to go back in and tweak later. If you make adjustments without making it a smart layer, then 
Once they're done, they're sort of cooked in. So the first thing I'm going to do after making a smart layer is come over to uh, shadows and highlights up in the image panel. And once again, this is an opportunity to play around with the shadows, which are the dark areas here, and the highlights, which are the light areas here. And there's even a mid-tone adjustment, which would be these in here somewhere. So we'll see what we get by tweaking this. Now you see how I pulled that up and immediately I gained all this detail here. A lot of detail. You're getting detail in his hair you didn't have before. So this is a very important step right here. You don't want to go too far, but that's starting to look pretty good. Let's see what happens if I start tweaking the highlights. Okay, we're losing a lot of the whites here. I kind of like that white on his face. So I want to keep that on there. So I'm really not going to mess with that too much. And we'll see what the midtone adjustment does. Okay, that's letting me to get a little more white on the face here. And once again, I've used this image before, but every time you're just going in here, so you're going to get a different result every time. So now that I say OK, you can see it's down here and we can easily double click and go right back to it if need be. Now, this was a trick I just learned the other day. I've been using Photoshop for years and I'm like, why the hell didn't I know this? But we're going to go up into filters here under stylize. We're going to go to oil paint. What I really like about this is this needs to be clicked off. But what I really like about this, if we start setting these adjustments here, you see what's happening here? This sort of grainy looking image, because it is a raster slash bitmap image, all of a sudden it becomes more vector like in shapes. And I like that style. It's really starting to look cool like that. You don't want to go too far with it. So start out here at first, because as soon as we get this image like this, we're going to drag it down, make a copy, and then we're going to start applying this same oil paint filter over and over again. And once again, I didn't invent this. I learned this from someone else. And it's one of those things that you, you always continue to learn things. If, if you keep watching tutorials from other people, you keep adding to your own toolbox. So you see, if I add another one on top of it, it gets even better. I love that. And then with command control F and then hit okay, I'm going to do this like four or five times. I'm just going to keep doing it. It's going to tweak it a little bit each time. And then you can go too far, obviously. So when you get to this point, you can actually be up here on your copy of this original layer. And we're just going to add a layer mask. And now if I paint on this layer mask, it'll let this one below show through. So if there's some detail that I like in here, like I look, the lips and the nose in here. If I like some of that detail that I lost, I can come in with this layer mask and I can paint right back over it and it'll reveal this lower image layer rather. And you'll see if I paint over here, I'm getting some of that detail that I had in my original that I liked, like his chain here completely got lost. So you just have to flip back and forth and see what you lost. And say, hey, I want some of that back in here. I want some of that hair detail back in here. Yeah. So I'll do this a few times. His bracelet here really like that detail right there. So I'm going to pull some of that back into this image. 
Now, it's important to note at this point, anything that sits below these four layers are going to fall within this color palette, depending on where the tonal range is at. With that in mind, if you were to add text at this point, you could tweak that text. Whatever you do, it's going to fall within this uh, range. Uh, as an example, when I did this earlier, I added a t-shirt design in here and I'll show it to you at the end, but it fell right within this range. But at this point, now you can just go up and start playing with the color fill once again and pull around and see if you can pull any more detail or any less detail out of there that you want. Really, this is up to you how all this works. And why I like this is because I can pull all day long and find different shades in here. See how that went down to two color. And when I say two color, I'm just talking about the, the, the black and green, but we lost that third color in there, which I really didn't want to do, but you can find it back. There it is. And always, if you pull over here, it's just going to go down to the black. So use this carefully. If you don't like what you see, then hit cancel and you're going to go back to where you were before. Now, in the end, when you flatten all this out, you could come in here and erase things like this or you can do anything you want with the background, knock it out. You can do what you want when it's all said and done and you flatten this layer. But as it sits now, these four layers are a great template for you just to throw another photo in and start at this point so you don't have to build this over and over again. So it's good to save this as a template and it has this posterized look, but more importantly, you could get this to the point in, from an embellishment standpoint where this could be a four color print, whereas before it was a full color photo. Now it's got this artsy look uh, and you could easily separate out these channels and print these out and burn your screens. Or you could possibly do a layered vinyl cut by uh, vinyl cutting each one of these. This image will be a lot easier to bring into a program like Illustrator and create outlines and vector shapes. It would be impossible to do that with the original photo. If we go back and look at the original photo, you're going to see it kind of looks funky now because of that oil paint filter. Whereas the bottom layer, we only did it to it once. But you can kind of see what the program's doing here. And in the end, you know, that actually looks pretty cool right there, those colors. And don't be afraid to uh, mess around with this gradient map here. The gradient map itself is going to be what your colors are. Just make sure they land on the 40 and the 60 here. So if we wanted to go with a royal from the start or blue in there, and then change this color. Let's go with like a, or even an orange. We can really play with this all we want. It's really not about the color at this point, it's the shapes. So I'm going to cancel. I kind of like what's going on uh, with here. And I'm going to show you when I did this earlier, it's going to look different, I guarantee you, because I added some stuff, but this is what I ended up with earlier. So sort of the same style, a little bit different crop here. I've added in this logo and this t-shirt design. This was for an Instagram post. They're not too far off from each other. You can see I kind of got to the same point. And then of course I added this little white outline around it and when I dropped in these logos, I had to crop this logo down to fit within the t-shirt, but that's how you do it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I learned a lot using this technique and I will never use the posterize 
uh, auto adjustment again. This is something I love to play around with and I take lots of photos in and just trying to perfect this technique. But this gives you a basic understanding of what's going on. And you can even play around with in this channel here where the 4060s all the way down, you can change that, change it to 25, 75, but just make sure you match it up here in your gradient mask so that you're mapping the colors where you expect them to be. That's very important. And even on this end here, you can see if you wanted you could put blue up in there. So it's not really limited by anything but the colors you define in this gradient map. Thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing and you subscribe, I want to thank you for that and thank you for liking the video. I'm going to continue to do videos to help people in the garment embellishment business and just learning this production art overall and how to get things to the press. So until next time, peace out, everybody.